Today I'm in the luxury capital of the south of France, Côte d'Azur, Nice. And just look at that beautiful sea. Here along the Promenade des Anglais, the English Promenade, what else? Behind me, La Baie des Anges, Angels Bay. Today I'm delighted to be cooking with Jean-Denis Rublan, a young powerhouse chef who runs the historic restaurant Chanclair at the Negresco Hotel with one Michelin star. We'll be turning up the heat with some seriously bold Negresco creations. First, we'll start with longestine prawns and the veal croquette, garnished with an emerald green pistou made with tangy rocket lettuce instead of basil. Next, we're going to tame Rublan's wild European bass with fresh asparagus, quinoa, and delicious pomme souffle. Last, my favorite, dessert, a hand-blown green apple made with caramelized sugar. This signature Negresco creation looks more like a sculpture than a dessert. So join me, Ashley James, for another exciting adventure of cuisine culture here in the beautiful south of France. I'm Chef Ashley James. When I'm not catering to the demands of stars in LA, I'm touring the world cooking with culinary geniuses. Take your gourmet passport and learn how to cook like a master chef and eat like a celebrity. Bon appétit, hein? Bon appétit. Jean-Denis Roublanc took over the kitchen of the mythic Negresco Hotel back in 2007. Like all chefs, Jean-Denis has a wide network of suppliers. Bonjour. Bonjour. Comment ça va? Ça va et vous? Oui, ça va. Ça travaille aujourd'hui? Oui. On a Sunday morning like this, almost everyone who cares about food on the Riviera is gathered here. Chefs, farmers, merchants and home cooks. Bonne journée. À vous aussi. Au revoir. Au revoir. His meats, Roublanc heads to the famous marché for a in Cannes. Messieurs, dames, bonjour. 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 Ça va Bonjour. Ça va Allez, merci. Ciao. À bientôt. Merci. Merci d'être venu. Allez. Bon courage. Au revoir. So in the hotel, every floor, when you arrive, has its own theme. When you go into each of the wings, you have different uh, themes in art. And here, for example, we're on the 18th century. You have a uh, Francois Boucher, uh, an original, uh, which is very rare, uh, with this uh, beautiful divan from the 18th century, and a lot of Asian uh, pottery because in the 18th century the French did a lot of traveling to Asia and brought back and decorated their salons with that. So here you are in the uh, Pompadour suite uh, on the fifth floor of the, uh, of the Hotel de Negresco. Everything is decorated in the Louis XV style because as you know uh, Pompadour was uh, one of the mistresses of Louis XV. Here we're in the Royal Salon which is the heart of the hotel. Above me, we have a chandelier uh, made by Bakrat in the early 20th century, ordered by uh, the last Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II, who actually ordered two at the time, one of which made it to Russia, and it, you can find it today in the Kremlin. Uh, this one never made it because of the, uh, the revolution that broke out, and Madame Auger found it uh, in Monteau in the 1980s. You have 16,800 Bakrat crystals. Around you have the glass dome, which is uh, Gustave Eiffel from the Eiffel Tower, who built, uh, who built this when the hotel was uh, built in 1912. Today we'll be starting with Langoustine prawns and a veal head croquette, garnished with a typical Provencal emerald green pestou made with tangy rocket instead of basil. 
Here I am today in Nice at the beautiful Negresco Hotel with Chef Jean Denis of his beautiful one-star Michelin restaurant, the restaurant Chanteclair. So what are we going to be doing? A very classical French dish, la tête de veau, a veal head uh, cheese, as we say in, in English. This dish in France is, is very common. You can have it in brasseries, but in a very rustic form. Today, what Jean Denis has made with it is a very um, refined version of uh, the, the veal head, la, la tête de veau. One of the components of the dish is a garlic cream. So Jean Denis is going to peel the garlic. So we're going to be putting about five to six pieces of garlic, uh, very simply, into a pan with a little bit of cream. So I'm going to put 20% of this cream, which is 200 milliliters, in the pan. So the garlic we're going to put very simply into the cream. So we're going to be cooking that for about 30 minutes on a slow heat until all of the garlic is very softly cooked. So that's great. The creme de ail, the garlic cream, is working. But so the next thing we have to do is the famous pistou sauce. So for the pistou here we have some beautiful rocket. So we're choosing a few of the beautiful leaves, which we're going to use at the end for the garnish. So here we have a pan of water that we're just going to bring up to the boil. And we're going to put a little bit of salt in it. Remettre de sel. The garlic cream, that looks pretty good. So the water is boiling, and now we're going to blanch this beautiful arugula to make the pistou. Pistou is really just a French version of pesto. Uh, you know, traditionally, it's made with, with basil, with parmesan, olive oil, and pine nuts. But um, Jean Denis is using a very simple version. He's just going to be blending that in the blender with a little bit of this amazing local olive oil. Okay. So very, very simple. Olive oil, blanched arugula. What could be better? So what do we have? So the, the garlic cream. Look at that. Look how beautiful that looks there. This delicious garlic cream which we, we're also going to blend it. What are we missing? Langoustine. langoustine. Where are the langoustine? En bas. They don't see. Uh, OK. Them. So come on. We're going to go to the, uh, the fishmonger's just arrived. And we have all these beautiful boxes of fish. So let's go and check it out. Yeah. On y va. The fish room. Wow. wow. And this is where you receive all this beautiful fish. Langoustine. Sans belle, huh? Beautiful langoustine. Look at that. That is amazing. And what do we need for the... Le bar. Le bar. Le bar. That is such a beautiful fish. Just look how firm the flesh is. You can't get much fresher than that. That's really, uh, it's really beautiful. Voila. Great, look at that. So let's go back to the kitchen and where we're going to prepare this beautiful langoustine. So we're going to take off the shells. There we go. On fait ça deux, non? Oui. D'accord. So we're just going to take this. You can see, look how, look how fresh that is. I mean, it is amazing. Okay. Voilà. Very good. Beautiful. So he's just going to trim up these beautiful langoustine, devein them as well. We're going to roll the langoustines oh. up. Okay, so there we have these three beautiful rolled langostinos. A little bit of salt and pepper. So we're going to lightly roast these uh, langostinos in the pan with the beautiful olive oil. And then we're going to be finishing it, them off with this amazing butter. And this butter is actually seasoned with piment d'espelette, espelette pepper, which comes from the Basque region. So Jean Denis is going to turn the, the langoustine in the pan. That looks really good. Nice little roasted oh. color on there. All those natural sugars coming out. They're naturally a beautiful color, but with this espelette pepper butter, it's going to make them even more golden. Beautiful. So these delicious um, tête de veau croquettes, I'm going to put them in the fryer at 180 degrees Celsius until they're golden brown. So the delicious golden brown croquettes. So we're putting a little bit more espalette butter on them to give them a nice shine and more flavor. 
great. So I'm gonna put this over here. So we're gonna mix this delicious cream. Je mets ça dedans, pourquoi? Voilà. Beautiful. There we go. So Jean Denis is blending the garlic cream and making a delicious foam on the top. Beautiful. That looks great. Une cuillère. Donc là, on va récupérer que la mousse. Que la mousse. Que la mousse qu'on va mettre dedans. That's really beautiful. Very detailed. C'est bon. So next, the pistou. Le pistou. Beautiful. Et ensuite, donc on, on va disposer les, les têtes de veau. D'accord. Un, deux, trois. So that is the veal head, um, tête de veau, croquette. Et ça on enlève le. On enlève le pied dedans. Le pied dedans. Je t'aide avec ça. Voilà. Je vais prendre les toothpicks de ces beautiful langoustines. What an elegant plate. I really like that presentation. A little bit of arugula. Les dernières, les dernières uh, finitions. Finitions de l'assiette. Let's, let's <laughs> taste it. It looks so good. I can't wait. Voilà. <laughs> The sweetness of the langoustine, with that nice spiciness of the pimo, the yeah. espalette, delicious. Mm. For our main course, Rubon's highly praised fish, a European bass, is going to be tamed with fresh asparagus, quinoa, and delicious pomme souffle. So this beautiful fish, they call it bar here in France, and it's actually a sea bass that comes from the Atlantic. Delicious, really beautiful. The first thing is we're gonna take the asparagus. We're gonna put four pieces of asparagus to cook. In the boiling water, salted water. Get some salt. So this amazing quinoa seed, all we're gonna be doing is cooking it with a little bit of chicken stock, approximately for 20 minutes until all of the chicken stock evaporates. So here we have this amazing Atlantic sea bass. Jean Denis is gonna be making a filet. Piece of fish. You can see just how fresh that is, how firm. So, so we're going to be cooking this fish. We often say it's very important to feed the food. So he's basting it with the amazing olive oil. So the asparagus, they, they cook beautifully. We're just going to refresh them in some iced water. So as you can see, uh, Jean Denis has just sliced the potatoes on the meat slicer. And the word that he uses that they should be like une pièce. Une pièce meaning a coin, a money coin. We're going to fry it at 150 degrees Celsius in the oil. So as you can see, five minutes in the fryer and the potatoes look like that. Very light and crunchy on the outside and in the middle, nothing but air. The famous French bomb souffle. Okay, so we've taken the fish out of the pan and now we're gonna reheat the asparagus, those delicious asparagus, in the same pan where we cook the fish with just a little extra olive oil. Lightly coating the uh, asparagus with the, the, the sea bass flavored oil. So, quinoa. On va saisonner le quinoa. Superb. So the quinoa we have here that we cooked earlier with the chicken stock. Qu'est-ce qu'on a là? Ciboulette. Ciboulette, the chive, the chervil, and parsley. 
So a little bit more of lemon at the last minute. Gives it a good lift. Lots of freshness. Great. So I'm going to put this delicious quinoa. On va mettre le quinoa dans le petit rectangle. D'accord. So there we have that deli delicious herb quinoa with the lemon in the mold. We're compacting it down a little bit. A little finish with the fleur de sel. Gives a nice crunchy texture. A little bit more olive oil. Uh, uh, two, three. three beautiful asparagus. The bar, the Atlantic uh, sea bass. Beautiful. Les pommes soufflées. Les pommes soufflées. Les Donc soufflées. là, on va enlever. On va enlever ça. Un, deux. Donc c'est vraiment une assiette euh, très élégante. Ah. Beautiful. So the finishing touch would be. Uh, the pomme souffle. Donc, uh, look at that beautiful dish. So at last, I'm gonna try this dish. Mm. Ça croustille dans la bouche, là, le poisson. Put that fish in your mouth and the crispiness of the skin and the moist flesh, really very delicious. Here we are in the old part of Nice town at the flower market, Le Marché aux Fleurs. You can find pretty much everything, spices, herbs, candies, the finest, freshest fruits. It's all great. And just look at all these beautiful fruits, all these local fruit confits, candied with sugar. And the majority of these fruits, they've all come from the local region. The truth is I want to try them all. Wow, that is so good. Bonjour, Ashton. Bonjour, ça va? Qu'est-ce qu'il est de bien ici à manger? Qu'est-ce qu'il est vraiment niçoise? What do you have that's typical from Nice that I can try? Okay. Do you like onions? Of course, yeah. I love onions. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good. Yeah, do you like it? I do. How can you not come to Nice and not try a pie saladier, the traditional Nice-style bread? Yes. Yeah? Very good. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you later. See you later. Bye. What a knockout way to end a meal. A hand-blown green apple made with caramelized sugar. The pastry chef pairs it with a refreshingly tangy Granny Smith apple sorbet. As you all know, I just love dessert, and I'm here in the very capable hands of Jean Charles, the pastry chef here at the Negresco Hotel. Basically, it's gonna be a delicious blown sugar green apple filled with an espuma of green apple with some streusel with a green apple sorbet. So this sounds really delicious, I love it. So we have a cooked sugar, so it's basically sugar and glucose, which is being cooked to 170 degrees Celsius. Jean-Charles has added a little bit of green coloring, and then he pulls the sugar. So this guy is the expert. He's gonna now blow with this device here um, an apple. Very similar to an artisan would blow glass. So he's making a small round ball, the size of a small walnut. He's gonna cut it off. So it's very important, he's sticking the two sugars together, so he needs to heat it up so the sugar melts, they will stick. And now, as you'll see, um, he has a small ball at the end of the palm. He's, he's gonna gently squeeze the palm to inflate. And just look at that, how amazing that is. Voila, he's, he's moving it all the time, just as a glass blower would do with glass. Il doit suivre la matière, hein. Il faut essayer d'avoir quelque chose le plus rond possible. Okay. Après, voilà. So there we go. Look at that beautiful um, apple. Well, it's actually a round glass ball. 
On va la refroidir un peu. Voilà. Aussi pour l'affiner. He's moving it so it loses voilà. its temperature, cools down a bit. On veut pas que ce soit trop épais. The sugar is starting to set hard and crunchy. Le dessus aussi, voilà. Voilà. Oh, une belle pomme. On va la couper, tête baissée. So there we go, we're going to cut the sugar ball away from the pump. It takes a lot of patience to do this. I'm sure he's broken many of them. We're going to come back to the apple. So the next thing we need for the recipe is uh, the espuma. And espuma really means foam in English. So we're going to make the foam. So fresh apples. Fresh apple. Here we have some cream. So we're going to heat the cream. Voilà. We're going to use one and a half fresh Granny Smith apples. And then we're going to blend this apple with the cream. Yep, as well. Voilà. So there we have the Granny Smith apples, a little bit of water. Voilà. 50 grams d'eau, à peu près. 50 grams of water. What I'm going to do for um, Jean Charles is I'm going to I'm going to blend the apples with the water. D'accord, so here we have the blended apple with the water, which has been blended. I'm going to strain that. So Jean-Charles is heating up the cream, and what he's going to do, he's going to add the agar, agar, and the sugar to the cream. Then we're going to mix it with the apple juice. Great. There we go. D'accord. bien mélanger. Voilà. Comme ça. So we mix a little bit of the the apple juice slash puree with the agar agar and the sugar. This delicious mixture now, we're going to chill it. So the next thing we're going to do is some um, uh, caramelized apples flamed with calvados. So I'm going to peel this apple for uh, Jean-Charles. We're going to cut it into a brunoise, which is small cubes. So as you can see, the warm pan, the clarified butter, and the brunoise of apple. We're going to saute them to golden brown. So there we have the apples nicely sauté with the butter, the sugar, and finally, the best bit of the recipe. I love carpados. Okay, on y va. On y va. Voilà, Après. les flammes. Voilà. Okay. So obviously, be careful if you try to do this at home, huh? The smell here is really good. The green apple, the carpados, the sugar, the caramel. Very good. I'm getting hungry, huh? <laughs> I'm going to put this apple to chill a little bit. And now Jean-Charles is going to finish this amazing green apple. So he's going to heat the circle with the blowtorch. La pose dessus. D'accord. So as you can see, the very hot circle, the voilà. cutter, pour faire le four. And he's made this beautiful, clean cut. If you look closely, it looks like an apple. That's really beautiful. So the next thing is the spoon. So Jean-Charles is filling the apple, two-thirds full, with the espuma, the apple espuma, and spreading it to make sure it covers all the inside areas. Next, he's going to put some of the delicious caramelized flambe apple. Qu'est-ce qu'on va mettre après le flambe de l'orange pour le beurre Scrucer. Et maintenant, je compte sur toi pour que tu me fasses la quenelle de l'orange. Génial. Ça vous prend dedans Dedans. So, 
Jean-Charles, what can I say, it really is a beautiful dessert. I think it, it comes from a, a very classical combination. You know, when you, you look at the apple, you look at the streusel, you have the very common dessert of, a, of an apple crumble, but that is, that is a Michelin star apple crumble. Some gold, look at this gold leaf. Very uh, Côte d'Azur, no? Yeah, the golden coast of France, no? With the golden apple. That looks beautiful, that golden touch, the Côte d'Azur. What can I say? What a beautiful, elegant dessert. And I'm gonna go to the restaurant and try that with the chef. And to finish off my beautiful stay here at the hotel, I wanna thank you so much for the recipe. Merci. Et puis à la prochaine. Merci. On y va au restaurant, non? Le Chef, what can I say? Thank you so much again. Um, such a beautiful hotel, the Negresco, the amazing restaurant, the Chanteclair, a great glass of champagne here on the Côte d'Azur. This is Ashley James, Cuisine Culture, and I look forward to seeing you soon for another exciting episode somewhere on the planet. Cheers. Salut. Chin chin. Merci. Hein? For recipes, tips, and information about today's program, visit us online at www.cuisineculture.tv. What a great appetizer that was. Now we're going to do the main course in the microwave.